Hi everyone, in today's video we're making another open source contribution for Google Summer of Code and I'm also sharing a list of good first bugs that you can solve yourself. I've open sourced this repo which contains a list of 50 to 100 good first bugs that you can solve and I'll be choosing to solve one of these bugs today so that I can show you how you can go through the list yourself and start contributing. I've linked the repo in the description and I'll be adding more bugs to this list as I find them. I've basically gone through the GSOC organizations page sorted them based on languages and try to find the bugs that I feel are good first bugs. Some of them might not be because I've really looked at them from the very top, but I'm hoping a lot of these are good first issues and you can contribute to them. With that, let's get right into the video. Before we start, let me share some meta tips with you. A pattern that I'm seeing in a lot of these bugs is a lot of people from India, Bangladesh, generally Asia are claiming these issues, but they're not actually contributing to them. For example, let me find one. Here is one where I saw two people wanting to assign the issue to themselves. Let me, I'm sure that I can find a few more. So here, hi, I'm new to open source. Please assign this issue to me. Hi, okay, I might be able to fix this. So what I would suggest here is there are two types of repos, at least that I've seen. The first ones are where people have not yet contributed. I'd say there, try to get issues assigned to you. If you don't get an issue assigned to you or like any contributor response in a day or two, then just create the PR. And if there is a conflict, you should be the one to close it because what happens in GitHub or generally a good open source etiquette is to not start working on an issue altogether. You should first get the issue assigned to yourself so that there aren't clashes and two people don't contribute to the same issue. But what I'm seeing here is a lot of people are wanting to get the issue assigned to them, but aren't really working on it. So if you find yourself in such a position where an issue has been assigned to someone and it has been stale for, I don't know, five, six days, you can either ask that contributor whether or not they're still pursuing it, or you can just go right ahead and create a PR for it. In the worst case, yes, you might get some slack. You, this, you shouldn't be doing this ideally because clashes in open source are bad. But what I'm seeing here is a lot of people are not actually contributing. They're just getting the issue assigned to themselves. And hence, if you find a crowded repo, you can follow this path. If you find a repo that's more open and not a lot of people are contributing to it, over there, get the issue assigned to yourself and then start working on it. I'm also seeing a lot of very simple questions being asked. If you actually want to get into GSOC, even though it is a program for beginners, it's always a good idea to Google a few things before you ask them right from the contributors. In the end, it's in the contributor's hand to make sure you get in. And if you'll show them you don't understand basic stuff, most probably you won't, unless they don't have any other option. So I would highly suggest here that you Google before you ask at least high level meta Git GitHub related questions to the open source contributors. You can have questions related to the project, but a lot of questions that I'm seeing here are related to, oh, I'm not able to contribute or I'm not able to push to this repo, which if you would have just Googled, you would have known why that is not happening. So those are just my two thoughts before you start contributing. Again, I've made this list open and hence I'm assuming a lot of people will be contributing. So try to avoid clashes, but at any point, if you feel it's been a day or two and you haven't been assigned an issue or if someone has been working on it for a while and haven't really contributed, feel free to create a PR if you think you can actually do it. So with that, let's start contributing. If you haven't seen the first video where I made her note contribute, uh, you can click right here. I will be contributing to a similar repo. So if we go to the issues section here, let me find and filter these by good first bugs. And this was the one that Hartnur contributed to. Um, and I'll be contributing to one that I found here. Tu, 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 tu. Access token overflows. So this was created on December 15th. So it's been open for a while. And it looks like it's fixed. So the issue I was thinking of working on has already been fixed, which is great. Uh, let's try to find a new one. I have to uh, go a little ad hoc now. I was a little more prepared to solve an issue that I knew how to solve, but I'm sure we can find something else. One eternity later. Okay, so we've moved to a different organization and we're setting up the project locally. The organization is called Jitsi Meet. It's an open source video conferencing tool, very similar to Zoom. And we will be trying to solve an issue here. This will take longer than expected. So I apologize to my editor and I apologize to my sleeping schedule as well. Again, here, as you can see, people are like, I want to try to solve the issue so many times. And these people are really smart. They're like, just solve the issue. And we don't assign people, which is pretty smart, I think. Okie dokie. 
So there are a few issues. Let's look at it. I think I'm going to see some things. So I found the issue, as you can see. Um, and I'm trying this on their cloud instance right now. Uh, so I haven't really set up the project locally, but what is happening is if I click on more actions here, it overflows from the top and people can't, on a small screen, people will face issues. On a normal screen, it just works. But um, if you're on a smaller machine or if your scaling factor is really high, which I feel is something like this, as you can see, it overflows and I can't really scroll through this. So what I really have to do is, uh, I mean, I can just do the fix in line here and then maybe push the fix to their repo. But the fix should be as simple as. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, the key. Yada. Height, I don't know. 500 px overflow scroll and here we go i mean this is a start this is not the solution because if you limit the height eventually oh what you can do is max height i don't know 90 vh does that work i don't think that worked let's make it 60 vh ah there we go that's pretty cool so what we've done here is we've set the maximum height of this element to be 60 percent of the height of the whole window so you know at any time it won't overflow if i make the height lesser the height of this element also goes smaller and i can simply scroll through it we've added the overflow scroll attribute as well so fairly simple uh, fix the difficult bit will be setting up this locally and uh, I guess that's it. Or maybe if they're a very sophisticated project, maybe they want a better fix. For example, right now what can happen is if your width is a little weird, as you can see, share video gets cut from the middle and maybe they want it to only happen in steps. I don't know. Some organizations are very picky, but I feel like this is a decent solution. It's a two line fix, but difficult bits are one, finding where that fix needs to be done and two, uh, setting up the project locally to test whether or not you're fixed, actually fixed it. So let's get right into that. So I can't really fight it. I have to clone the project, uh, unfortunately, fortunately, um, to make it work. So let's, oh, I think I already did. Let's open up the project in a, an IDE. My IDE is shitting on me right now. Damn, that's a long list, bro. Okay. No. One eternity later. Margin zero. Margin zero. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, bhaiya. Never mind. So I've been able to solve this issue. Um, I mean, I've, I was able to solve this issue a while ago. I'm able to find where I need to make the change to make it work. It's right here. And I think a lot of this was fast forward, but what I ended up doing, let me just show you. Um, I ended up searching the, a few literals here. Toolbox button with dialogue. That's what I searched. And that's part of this file, if I'm not wrong. That's part of this file. So that's how I reached this overflow menu button.tsx file. And here, if you see, there's an if else condition. If the drawer is open, then do this, else open this popover. So I realized this popover is where, is this popover is basically the popover that opens up this guy right here with the class name popover. Where are you? This div class equal to popover is this popover in the code base. And this, if you see, uh, has the overflow toggle button as a child. And uh, was that it? Ah, no, no, that wasn't it. 
but children yeah yeah the pop overs contents are the children that are passed to this class hence this overflow menu button actually wherever this is used has children which effectively uh, is what shows up here so from here i reached this context menu and if you look at the class which class was it this context menu is basically the menu that appears here with the class context menu and yape if i add max height 60vh then we're good to go so i just added the same styles uh to this class name which one you guys got it uh come on ah this one classes dot context menu and just to confirm i s confirmed that all these style properties are actually uh part of the context menu here right auto right auto position relative position relative hence i decided these two style attributes here which if i add here it fixes our issue and that should hopefully fix it what you should ideally do is set up the project locally and make sure it actually does it i am not going to do that uh, even if this doesn't make it and if there's a bug here i'm I, i'm not participating in gsoc this year so i should be fine even though i hope there's no bug here so yeah let's add the changes let's check out to a new branch fixes pop over and let's go to our let's fork the jitsi meet repo let's commit let's add a new remote which is my fork let's push to our fork and let's create a pull request title is good enough fixes style of popover fixes overflow of popover and let's attach the issue there as well and let's say close this this happens on smaller machines the fix slash hack i've added is to restrict the height of the pop over and add scroll to it should be good enough get pull request and that's it guys it's as easy as that go to the list find an issue that you like and work on it and i'm sure you guys will get in with that let's end the video it's very late and i'm extremely sleepy i will see you guys in the next one peace